You know what? I'm gonna be brave and break some new ground here in 2017 by saying it doesn't make sense that Han Solo would shoot second after Greedo in the cantina scene. Scientifically speaking, that is. Look, I'll be honest, it would be really easy for me to jump on the internet bandwagon and say that it's a crime that Lucas re-edited the scene to make Han shoot second, but it, it, I don't really care because no matter which version of the scene you choose to believe in, technically Han always shoots last. Don't think about it too hard. Hashtag hunch at last. Either way, as if the internet needed any more reason to hate the re-edited version of that scene, I wanted to provide a more objective reason why it doesn't make sense. And not just a character story arc reason about how Han has to go from scoundrel to hero or whatever. And yes, I know that I am attempting to bring science into a completely fictional world that involves the equivalent of space magic, but... I mean, it's kind of what we do around here, uh, especially this month. It's our theme, science. So the cantina scene right here involving two gunslingers of Han Solo and Greedo kind of resembles an old school Western shootout, like a duel, but less formal, which is helpful in case you don't want to memorize the 10 duel commandments, even though there is a very catchy song about it. It was pretty common in old Western movies to have the villain make the first move in a duel only to be thwarted by the lightning fast hero gunslinger. Somehow. In fact, this idea of how the hero could win by shooting second in a duel caught the attention of none other than renowned physicist Niels Bohr. Bohr proposed this idea that the reason why a second shooter in a duel might win is because it's slower to act than to react. Essentially, we all know that our brains are wired to react to certain stimuli faster than we can consciously think it through. Like when a door slams and your instincts tell you to jump before you can even process what's going on. Evolutionarily, this is an incredibly great advantage to have. Just wire in some automatic responses so you don't have to think about what to do when there's a potential threat. You just do it. Basically, your body is better at surviving than you are. Bohr's hypothesis was that consciously deciding when to shoot, being that first shooter, would always be slower than simply tapping into your survival instincts and letting your body react to being shot at. In other words, the second shooter in a duel has a survival advantage. He reportedly tested this out in a very non-scientific method by just shooting fellow physicists with toy guns. He would always be reactive instead of proactive. The Han Solo to his colleagues Greedo at least in the re-edited version of that scene. And he claims he won every duel. Though most would argue that he was just either really lucky or a naturally gifted shot. But how about some actual scientific studies? Uh, years later, Andrew Welkin from the University of Birmingham did test out this theory of reacting versus acting in duels. But you know, instead of having uh, people shoot each other, because that would be really hard to find participants for, uh, they instead had a setup involving an array of buttons. It was two opponents facing off. There was no countdown time timer telling them when to go, no noise signaling them off to the races. They just sat there waiting for the other person to make the first move. And whoever went for it first, the second one had to go in, hit the series of buttons even faster and try to survive. Survive. Again, it's just, it was just buttons. They're just pressing buttons. And again, I want to stress that neither of the opponents knew if they were going to be acting first, reaching for those buttons first, or reacting to their opponent going after it first. There was no assigned roles. It was just kind of a spur of the moment thing. What the researchers found was kind of interesting and supports Bohr's idea. The reacting opponents, the ones who were reaching for the array of buttons second, actually completed the button pressing sequence 9% faster than their opponents who started the ones who acted first. So if this were an actual duel or a confrontation in a space pub, the opponent who shoots second is indeed faster than the one who shoots first. So I guess Bohr was on to something. Looks like it does make sense for Han to shoot second after all. Except it doesn't. Why would I title the video the way that I did? You've seen what the thumbnail looks like. Obviously, there's a catch here. As it turns out, that 9% speed increase for the second shooter only equates to around 21 milliseconds in actual time, which is not a lot. It's about 12 times shorter than the average human reaction time to visual stimuli. That being around 250 milliseconds, so quite a bit of a difference there. Still though, humans react to audio stimuli even faster than visual ones, and of course those blasters make loud noises. So, benefit of the doubt, let's say that Han was reacting to that. Could that 21 milliseconds make a difference? No! Yes, reacting to audio is typically faster, but it still takes around 170 milliseconds. That is still around eight times longer than the 21 millisecond advantage of being a second shooter in a duel. So, taking this all into consideration, this scene 
doesn't really make sense for a completely new host of reasons. Although I guess if you really wanted to be apologetic for this scene, there are at least two reasons I can think of uh, how this scene would make logical sense. The first one being if Greedo was as bad of a shot as a stormtrooper, when after that low hanging fruit there. The second one is if Han is force sensitive, which would actually explain a lot. Other than having that incredibly quick reaction time to dodging blaster fire, he's an incredible pilot, having taken the Millennium Falcon out of light speed manually before it crashed, always beating the odds somehow, and having unbelievably favorable luck in battle even when blind. Although, as Obi-Wan points out, In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. Huh. That's uh... Seems like there could be some sort of follow-up video here. In the meantime, I'd love to know what you guys think. I look forward to reading 800 comments about how Han shot first. Even though, as we all know, no matter how you look at it, Han shot last. Hashtag Han shot last. Also, we're gonna be trying something new. The day that this video goes up, later today sometime, we're gonna be going live on our Facebook page that you probably didn't even know that we had. We've never promoted it before. But we have it. We're doing some live stuff over there. It's kind of a post-show conversation, discussion. It's gonna be a good time. We're gonna be talking more Star Wars, more Han Solo. We're gonna be talking about why I lied to you guys on Twitter. Fun times. There'll be a link to our Facebook page in the description down below, or you can just search for NerdSync Productions. You'll find it. Normally, we do two videos a week here, but the second second one this week won't be on this channel, it'll be on Mr. Sunday Movies channel. He's an awesome guy, definitely go check him out, but also that video will be out tomorrow as of the, you know, the time that this video goes live. If you're watching in the future, it's already up, I'll probably have a link somewhere. But until then, until you wait for that, go ahead and watch our entire Star Wars playlist, all about how the Star Wars logo is different than you think it is, or how C-3PO got that red arm in The Force Awakens, that's one of my favorites, personally. Also make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all of our new videos every week. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.